Hello friends, last time we talked about the three laws of inheritance that were given by Gregor John Mendel. The first law was law of dominance. Today we are going to talk about the rest of the laws which were postulated by Gregor John Mendel. The second law of inheritance is law of purity of gametes which is also called as law of segregation. As we all know that when a pure tall parent is crossed with a pure dwarf plant, in first generation we get all 100% tall plants. This is what law of dominance is all about, that out of two traits, only one is able to exhibit itself in the first generation and that particular character is said to be dominating. So here tallness is dominating over dwarfness. In order to obtain second generation that is F2, we have to do the self pollination and here if we make the gametes to make the F2 that is second generation, these are the gametes. When we make this punit square, We have to simply mix the gametes, suppose these are male gametes and these are female gametes. So capital T, capital T, capital T, small t, capital T, small t and small t, small t. This plant would be tall, this plant also would be tall, this plant would also be tall and this plant since there is recessive allele that is small t, small t is going to be dwarf. If we find the phenotypic ratio of this, phenotypic ratio means ratio on the basis of external appearance. We see three plants that are tall and the one is dwarf. So the ratio would be 3 is to 1. That means 75% of the plants would be tall if we see them externally and 25% would be dwarf. But if you check the genotypic ratio, genotypic ratio is the ratio on the basis of genetic makeup that is going to be different. We have a pure tall plant. Why pure? Because same allele is duplicated. This is hybrid tall. This is also hybrid tall and this is pure dwarf. So the ratio is going to be 1 is to 2 is to 1 that is pure tall, pure dwarf and 50% of the plants would be hybrid tall. Mendel observed this particular generation F2 in his experiments and he postulated another law which is called as law of purity of gametes. Now what does it mean? What does it say? It says the two members of the alleles in F1 hybrid remain together without getting mixed up and they separate at the time of gamete formation and only one enters each gamete. Therefore, gametes are always pure, they are, they are never hybrid. So here at the time of gamete formation, even if these alleles are together, at the time of gamete formation, they are separating and only one, only one is entering in each gamete. Therefore, the gametes are always pure, they are never mixed. This is what law of purity of gametes or law of segregation. Now we come to the third law that is the law of independent assortment. In law of independent assortment, we have to check the dihybrid cross wherein we have to take two characters simultaneously into account. If we take yellow and round seeds as parents and cross it with green and wrinkled seed plant, seeded plant. These are the gametes.
In first generation, we get 100% yellow and round seeded plants as per the law of dominance. In order to get the second generation, we have to do the self-pollination. So capital Y, small y, capital R, small r. If you see the number of gametes, the types of gametes which are formed here, capital Y, capital R, capital Y, small r, small y, capital R, and small y, small r. These may be considered as male and similarly here, the female gametes. As per the law of independent assortment, in a dihybrid cross, all possible combinations are found in progeny because one pair of alleles is independent of another pair of alleles, another pair of genes. There is no mixing and all possible combinations are found in progeny. If we see here, capital Y can go with capital R, capital Y can have small r as well, small y capital R and small y small r. So there is no perfect combination like capital Y has to go with capital R or small y has to go with small r. This is not definite. It is independent of each other. As a result, all possible combinations are found in progeny. If you make this punit square and you follow the same number of same types of gametes, these kind of plants which are in the form of a triangle, they will all be yellow round. We can check that. This is yellow round, yellow round, yellow round, yellow round, here also yellow round, same here, yellow round, yellow round and yellow round. As a result, we will have the ratio of 9 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1, that is yellow round would be 9, yellow wrinkled will be 3, green round would be 3 and green wrinkled will only be 1. So in a dihybrid cross, in second generation, the ratio is going to be 9 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1. And as per the law of independent assortment, even if there are two characters taken into consideration, the sorting out takes place quite independent and all possible combinations are found in progeny. These were the three laws given by Mendel after he studied or made his experiments on Pisum sativum or garden pea. And after that, there were more scientists who gave lots of theories, lots of postulates after observing f uh, different experiments. And these postulates were quite different from Mendel's theories. They still we have a lot of weightage. Mendel's laws still have a lot of weightage. But after Mendel's work, many more scientists they took deviation, they found the deviation and they gave their laws. So we are going to talk about the deviations from the Mendel's laws that were observed post Mendelian work which did not adhere to the laws given by Mendel. Deviation from Mendel's laws post Mendelian work, there were quite a few scientists who found out that certain experiments showed deviation from Mendel's laws and the first deviation is law of incomplete dominance. This was observed in antirhinum and mirabilis plant, the snapdragon and four o'clock plant. As per the law of dominance, out of two traits, only one should appear in the first generation, which is said to be dominating. The other one is called as recessive. But two, it was a little different and here it was found If a red flowered plant was crossed with a white flowered plant, these are the gametes, capital R and small r. As per the law of dominance, these plants should have been red colored because red color is dominating over white trait. But it was the observations were quite different and instead of red colored plants, red flowered plants, pink flowered plants were observed. So 100% pink flowered plants. Now this was explained in the manner that red color is not completely dominating over white. Therefore, the F1 hybrid that the first generation becomes midway or intermediate 
between the two parents. So it's neither red nor white and it is found to be pink in color that is intermediate or midway since capital R is not completely dominating over white color that is small r. That was the first deviation from Mendel's laws and it was postulated as incomplete dominance. There was one more deviation which was observed by scientists that is multiple alleles. As per Mendel's work, it was told that there are two alternative forms of same gene. That means there are two alleles of the same genes. For example, for the height, it was tallness or dwarfness. Similarly, for the color of the flower, it was red and white. But it was found later on that instead of two alleles, there can be more than two alleles. And it was found in quite a few plants. And the best example is the blood group in human beings. To control the blood group in human beings, there are three different alleles instead of two as postulated by Mendel. And these three alleles were IA, IB and small i, wherein IA and IB, they are dominating over small i. As a result, there are six genotypes formed in the progeny and different, color, different types of blood groups are controlled. We can see it here. A person having capital I A and capital I A as well as capital I A and small i, that means pure and hybrid state, it's going to have A blood group. A person with I B I B, that is the homozygous state as well as heterozygous state that is IB small i is going to have B blood group. A person having both the alleles IA as well as IB is going to have blood group AB wherein sm small i small i would be O blood group. Now here we can see the same character that is the blood group is controlled by three different genes instead of two alleles as postulated by Mendel and as a result there are six combinations or six genotypes possible in the progeny. This is one, two, three, four, five and six. There is one more deviation which, when, which can be explained here that is co-dominance. Here we can see that IA and IB both are equally expressed. Therefore, the individual has got AB blood group. So this particular phenomenon can be called as co-dominance. So this IAB is actually co-dominance and co-dominance means both the alleles are equally expressed. Therefore, the blood group in the individual is going to be AB blood group. So this is the deviation from Mendel's work that is multiple alleles. There are quite a few more deviations which were observed post Mendelian work and they are polygenic traits and pleiotropy. Now we are going to talk about pleiotropy and polygenic inheritance. The third deviation from Mendel's laws was pleiotropy. Pleiotropy means when the same gene is controlling many traits. And the best example was seen in Drosophila, that is fruit fly. Drosophila or fruit fly is the fly that is observed, that is, uh, that is found hovering around the fruits because it's eating the fungi that is growing on the, on the fruits. Now in this particular fruit fly, it was found that the same gene is controlling many traits. And the example is the gene which was controlling the color of the 
wings also controlled the shape of the abdomen. Now here same gene is controlling two different traits, not only the color of the wings, but also the shape of the abdomen and size of the wings was also controlled by the same gene. Here the same gene is controlling more than one trait. So this was again the deviation from Mendel's laws and this can be, this is still known as pleiotropy. Next is polygenic inheritance. It is just the opposite of pleiotropy. In pleiotropy, one gene is controlling many traits. Here the reverse happens. That is, many genes, they control one trait. And the best example can be seen in the height in human beings and also the skin color in human beings as well as the kernel color in wheat. So these are the three best examples to explain the polygenic inheritance wherein many genes are controlling only one trait. If we see the skin color in human beings, it has, it has the additive effect or cumulative effect of many genes together and the color ranges from very dark that is negro to intermediate that is mulattoes and very very light that means very very fair in color. So here only one trait that the skin color is controlled by many many genes as a result there is cumulative effect and the color ranges from, as I told just now, it ranges from dark color, dark brown to very light and the intermediate ones are called as mulattoes. Very dark ones, they are the negroes. Intermediate ones are the mulattoes. and very light skin color, they are very, very fair. So here, same skin color is controlled by many genes and that is again another deviation from Mendel's laws of inheritance. Thank you.